everybody. My name is Maddie Jones and I'm the editor at Plus Model Magazine. And today I have the exciting opportunity to interview our February cover model, Summer Green. So a little bit about Summer. I've known Summer for a long, long time. She's been a model for many years. She's always been a really great advocate for black models and diversity. So I'm super excited to talk to her tonight. Let me get her in. There she is. So the first thing I wanted to do was welcome. Thank you so much for giving me your time. And I'm super excited to have you on the cover. I feel like I've known you forever and you've never been on the cover before. You've been in the I issues. Know. I know. <laughs> That's why I went ahead and I did that post. And I was like, I don't think everybody knows. This is not my first time being in Plus Model Mag, but it is my first cover. It's a long time coming. I'm so excited. So thankful. I mean, I just, when you called, I was like, yes, what kind of question is this? Of course. <laughs> so bring us back a little bit. We did a really great interview, but for those of us who, you know, like to kind of watch interviews, I wanted to do a recorded interview with you because I think your story is so, so interesting. Take us back to the very beginning when you first started modeling. So when I first started modeling, I was not into fashion at all whatsoever. I, I came from playing sports um, nonstop. And then I had an injury, couldn't play anymore. I actually, a lot of people don't know this, was in a singing group. And that's actually how they ended up seeing my photos is because the singing group had to have a, you know, we were doing our photo shoots. And then uh, it got to an agent and they were in Beverly Hills. It was an agency in Beverly Hills. And they, they said, well, what do you think about coming in? Have you ever heard of plus size modeling? And I was like, what are you talking about? What's, what is, what's plus size? First off, what's plus size next and uh, modeling me, your, even in the group, I was the tomboy of the group. Like I didn't think anybody would in a million years want to see me on any type of ad or any in on a runway or anything. And I went in there, they set up this photo shoot. And once I saw myself through the lens, I was like, oh, okay, here we go. This is me. I can't, it was very much like that TikTok um, trend that's going on where they're like, smile, raise your eyebrows. And they said, this is your model face. Like that was a hundred percent my situation. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, I was given, so I got, I got so excited. I was so excited from there. And I just told myself, okay, here's a whole new journey for you. My singing group was like, just, it was, it was coming to an end. It just wasn't going to happen. I wasn't playing sports anymore. And I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go in 120%. And I started doing internships where I could, um, found the love for for fashion show production through that um, and art directing through that. But I wanted to learn the ins and the outs. I didn't want to just be like, let me stumble my way through and then see what chances I could get. I just wanted to reach out to everybody. Literally was a sponge. I mean, it didn't matter if it was plus size or straight size. I just wanted to know what was going on because I felt like at that time, a lot of the girls that were modeling already had some kind of knowledge of the fashion industry. This is something that they were very much into. Whatever their style was, they were just definitely into it. And I was not into it. I, I couldn't, I didn't even know how to walk in heels, to be honest with you. Um, I had literally did training in the gym. So we're just going to the gym. And then I would take the second hour of the gym and we would use the exercise room or the dance room, put on heels in those mirrors. And I would just walk the floor, walk the floor, walk the floor, oh just so I can God. get comfortable being in heels. When I tell you I was so far behind in this, it's crazy to see now that I can walk a runway in stilettos. A lot I of can, runways. Yeah, I could pose and everything. That was, that definitely wasn't my journey to begin with. Didn't think it would ever be my journey journey. And um, I don't think it's quite the same now, but I think I got yeah. that tell in. Just to of set, let me set the stage a little bit. So this mm -hmm. was before social media, like this was yes. before Instagram, before you could, you know, go on YouTube and, and look up, you know, runway modeling or whatever, like things, this was a lot different. This was like word of mouth, who you know, you really needed to network. Like I remember during that time when you were coming up and you were like the model that was modeling, I remember coming from New York to LA for events. Like we literally came together at that time. Yes. Now it's so different. Yes, actually, um, I was just talking about this, that you actually came to an event. I think, no, the first time I met you was the, um, 
Shanice Lewis was doing her um, love your body day, love your body day, and you were there, and that was the first time I met you, and I just remember being like. Do you know, do you guys know everything that would like what Maddie has going on? Do you know who this is? And then the fact, of course, <laughs> you're coming from New York and in LA, we're like, that's the fashion capital. Oh my gosh, here's someone from New York. You have to network with them. And then from there, we just kept running into each other. We um, came out with True Shiro's with Maylee yeah, and I, and you saw us great. in New York and you were like, I love this. And we did that power pose with us. <laughs> It was an amazing, amazing time. So I think a lot of people don't realize how far back um, we go and yeah. that I am very thankful that you've always been supportive. I mean, yeah, every, every little every little thing I can think of, I'm like, Maddie, what do you guys think? Like, would Plus Model Mag like to be a part of this? I know, or you did so much. Remember the runway show? You did yes. the big runway show. I mean, you're more than a model. You're a producer. You've done so much in the industry. And I feel like for those of us that started way back when, there's a lot of people that are in the industry now that have absolutely no idea the blood, sweat, and tears that we put into this industry to get us to where we are today. That's why I always, I always support the industry now, but I definitely like to go back and just give everyone their credit and their due because at that time we didn't have social media. We were not doing interviews like this. It was like face to face, girl, wait, let me just write this down. Like that's how it was, you know? Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, it was a lot more boots on the ground. You had to network, you were exchanging phone numbers. You had to stay in contact and, and make that call and say, Hey, I'm coming in town on this day. You know, um, I'll be in, I'll be in town for this and that. And, and, um, I remember just seeing you at events. I think the first time that you, um, booked myself and you ended up booking Maylee as well was the fall, the September, uh, fall 2011 issue. Um, <laughs> with that issue will go down in history plus model magazine history. Oh my God. <laughs> We shot you guys, and nobody really knows this unless they were there. Like, Steffi reminds me every year. Every anniversary, I remember that shoot. I'm like, yes, I do. I will never forget. We shot in a, in a, a it was like burnt down, what, warehouse or something? Like a, it was, it was like a warehouse or, um, or was it apartment complexes or something? I couldn't tell because it was burnt down. Like, it still smelled like smoke. <laughs> smoldering the smoke was coming and then I remember Stanley like oh perfect we don't have to use that much of the fog machine because there was smoke coming up I was like we're all gonna have like you know lung damage for this photo shoot <laughs> it was crazy like we went through a lot but those pictures are amazing I'm posting them for um throwback Thursday oh yes that was that them. was Yes, that was an amazing shoot. And I think that that really was also like a test to what it is that you do to get an editorial. Um, that was shot in the summertime in Jersey. If I believe it was over 90 degrees, we were That's wearing right. all black and then it was smoldering in there. So it was yeah. extremely hot. And we had these feathers. massive he feathers and headpieces on. Yes, it, and it was but it was amazing. It was everything. I was so excited. And people also don't realize I don't, I don't live in New York. I've always lived in LA and I was traveling. I traveled to come and do that. I was so excited, but I did a lot of traveling back and forth to New York. Um, I still do. Well, not with the pandemic going on, but, but normally I'm there. What every, at least every other month I'm in New York or every month I'm in New York. So I do travel back and forth a lot. And um, that's just part of the modeling. I think that I picked up on really quick. Was there's a lot of traveling and a lot of, you know, you have to be able to try to be flexible. Now you do have a career and you have a husband. And I feel like, you know, I, I had a career when I first started Plus Model Mag and I, you know, I got married. If it wasn't because I had such a great support system, I don't think that I would be, I would have been able to grow Plus Model Magazine into what it is today. I would love for you to tell us about your husband because I think your journey with your husband has really made you stronger. I mean, it didn't surprise me that you were so strong through it, but it just was like, it's something that I feel like everyone needs to hear. Oh, yes, uh, definitely he is a huge part of even where I am now, just because when I, when I met my husband and we first started dating, yes, I was all already modeling. Um, but I, I kind of had got to this point to where I've been doing this for so long that I thought, 
well, maybe it's time for me to focus more on production side or art direction or take a different shift. Maybe I'm done with the modeling, traveling around a lot. And and he also made a sacrifice too. He he wasn't very into, uh-oh, sorry, my lights flickered. He, he wasn't um, into that a lot, like the traveling, the mm-hmm. back and forth of, of, of me flying. I think um, I was, at that time, I was getting bookings. It's picked up a little, maybe a few months into us dating where I was literally getting bookings and it was 24 hour notice. So all this time I'm working a regular job. I I have a full-time nine to five career as a safety professional. And I was flying. Uh, I would leave that night to fly in overnight land at uh, five or six o'clock in the morning at JFK. And then uh, my best friend would pick me up and drive me. I would literally be in the bathroom, freshen up, you know, wash just to be fresher again and and make sure that I was presentable. Everything was on the top of the bag that I needed. And then I would show up at my, whatever the job was or the casting was. And a lot of times I was turning around and catching the 6 PM flight right back out. So yes. And he would pick me up from the airport and be like, okay. And then we'll think it's done. Okay. We're going to do this. We'll do that. And I'll be like, Oh, sorry. I know we were going to make plans for this. My agent just called. I got to hop back on a plane tonight. And, and that would happen. And that kept happening in the middle, in the beginning. And I thought he's going to leave me. This is, it, you don't understand it unless you're in the industry. And I was like, he's right. going to leave me. But luckily he's in the music industry, grew up in the industry. He hundred percent understands entertainment. And he was like, you're not going to stop. He was Good. like, first off, I enjoy bragging that my girl's a model. So I'm not going to let you stop. And I was like, okay, all right. And then we got married. I mean, wow. it was, it, it, we turned around, we got married, um, happiest day of my life. Thought it was just like this amazing journey that finally happened for me and everything was going great. Came back from the honeymoon and I was laid off from work oh from my, my career God. job, uh, laid off for work within that week, started losing my clients, just gone. I don't, they, they were just like either not getting the work coming in. And these were the clients that I had. 2017 was probably the best year that I had in modeling. It was insane. It was nonstop. And I was planning my wedding. I would never in a million years think that all of a sudden at the end of the year, I was down to two clients. You couldn't tell me that because I was doing two to three clients fit or photo shoots a a, a day, probably five times a week. It was insane. And working my nine to five and planning a wedding. So it was a lot and I just wouldn't have thought that. Um, went from there to four and a half months in, I find out my husband has stage four cancer right after the wedding, stage four cancer. And I was like, I can't believe this happened right when I got laid off. We had insurance and everything. And I was like, I was switching him over to my PPO insurance, which should have been better insurance. And I just began to freak out. And I said, I can't freak out. We're going to take everything a step at a time. Six weeks later, he's in a 14 hour surgery. It was very quick. There was no time to plan anything. There was no time to worry. Um, Just had to like, I don't know. I became like a nurse overnight. Uh, He was in the hospital for two weeks. Um, And when he came home, I actually looked at everything a different way. I said, wow, thank God that I got laid off because I was able to be here for him. Exactly. Thank God that I didn't have the insurance because now we were able to get assistance where if I had the insurance, we would have been, we would have been stuck with a really high bill because they only cover 80%. A exactly. lot of people don't think about that part. I mean, I did a lot of research. I did a lot of boots on the ground, like going up to, to the county building or wherever I needed to go. And I'm not, a, it was difficult at the time because I didn't come from needing that type of assistance and I didn't know what to do or where to go. And I, I literally humbled myself. I have a whole new view on life and what we do have, what is available out there for people. Um, completely different view, completely different. Right. View. right, right. And, and I'm, I'm just a hundred percent thankful. I, I know a lot of people are like, Oh my God, I can't believe this happened. But because it happened, it actually ended up being a lot better. We never missed a payment of rent through that. Not once. He's not working and I'm not working. We never missed the payment of rent. I had, I had, there were some fellow models that 
just out the blue, these, I follow them on Instagram. I know who they are, but out the blue sent me a cash app. Didn't even know it was coming. I had, I have uh, brands that reached out. I have really amazing friends that were up to like five in the morning. We were getting my apartment ready for him to come back because when you're dealing with a cancer patient, you have to really disinfect everything. Not, it's not just about having a clean, like we had to disinfect top to bottom. We were up till five in the morning so we can bring them home. Um, just, it was just a, an amazing journey, sad, but amazing. I learned a lot. Um, and in there, I still picked up modeling gigs. Still yeah. And picked I feel up like it, 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 it look, made you look at the big picture. Yes. I think looking at the big picture in the industry is really, really important. When I tell people that I waited 10 years to work with one client that I always wanted to work with and they worked with everybody else and I went to all of their previews and I went to all of their parties and I would applaud all of my friends or whoever it was that was working with them. And I was like, if it's for me, one day I, it'll be for me. And I did, I had like a three-year contract with them. I worked with them for three years. And the other thing was, that I picked up from your story from our interview was you just as a model when you're working you you can't just think that this is how it's going to be all the time one day that job is going to end and it's go to some it's going to go to someone else and it yeah. wasn't it wasn't necessarily about you I think sometimes we take it really personally like oh my god they don't want to work with me it's they're changing their aesthetic. They're changing their marketing. They're changing, you know what I mean? Like we we thought we would never see a Lane Bryant campaign without Ashley Graham. There are no campaigns that, you see what I mean? Like yeah. things change and you are part of that change when you're a model, you know, you just, you're in it. That's why I feel like you have to have number one, to me is several streams of income is really important, especially as you're modeling. And number two, you have to know that that job is not always going to be yours. It's going to go to another model. And you have to oh, yeah. I think, graciously pass it on and move on to the next and move on to the next. And don't say, oh my God, that's the end of my career. It'll, it'll come. If that's your career and that's your passion and that's your journey, it'll continue yes. to move on from there for sure. That's what I got from your interview. Your interview was really, really interesting to me. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with what you're saying. It, it is, that's why I kept saying it's a marathon. It's a marathon. Yes. Yeah. It is not a situation of like, oh my gosh, we're going to just go ahead and I'm doing it. And once I get this big client, it's just going to keep going and going and going and going. No, it doesn't work that way at all. That's not how it works. Um, there are down times. There were times that I was represented and I wasn't represented. Then I was represented and I wasn't represented. And in some, in there, sometimes it's like an amazing representation and you're just working, 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 working. And other times it's, there's nothing. Right. And even though let's you're talk about, let's talk about being represented because that's a really good topic also that we get questions about that all the time. The difference between being a represented model and not being represented and what are your responsibilities to the agency? I don't think models realize the responsibility that you have to the agency. Can you talk about that? Yes. So I, I, I get asked this too. I, through, through the years, I've had some models that have reached out, whether they're new or they're changing, or they just want to know about the agency that you're with. But um, I, I always say the same thing. You have control of your of your career. So you can't say, okay, I'm signed with the agency now. So now I'm just going to sit back and I'm going to put all the blame on my agent if I'm not booking. Your agent only represents you. It is representation of what you put forth. So if you're not putting forth that effort, then you're not going to get anything out of it. That's, yeah. That is the, a big key. Exactly. And it goes from everything from testing. Are you testing? And then, and then keeping in mind, if you're not contacting your agent, why is your, your agent going to worry about contacting you? Exactly. Um, that's, that's, I read that uh, in an interview. Like I said, I studied a lot when I wanted to um, uh, really, when I first started modeling. And one of them was reaching out to your agent once a week. You're Absolutely. not sitting down waiting for your agent to reach out to you. You are reaching out to your agent. If it is Christmas, you are sending your agent a Christmas gift. It is a thank you. You're not buying off your agent, but your, your agent is working on the weekends, off while you're at, at any time they're working, they're submitting packages, they're reviewing your photos, they're doing a lot. And so you want to say, thank you. You are putting in that effort saying, I appreciate what you're doing for me. 
And I also say you should do that with your clients as well. If you book, I don't care how big you are or how often you work with them, you are always appreciative for getting that booking. Cause like you said, they could have went to another girl, another picked a different model. Um, right. And I, I I think that there's a lot of that that has to be done. That's a lot that comes from you, what your responsibility is. Um, you're also you're also representing yourself, yourself as well, and the agency in a certain uh, perspective. Right. Okay? You want to keep that in, in, in consideration as well, because although you might have an amazing photo, they, are, they still have to work with you. They still want to make sure that uh, how are you going to be on set? Um, all of those things come into play. Your professionalism, um, right. even sometimes, a lot of times, your, your ethical side. Uh, where are you on an ethical side when you're walking on to set? All of those things come into play. It's not just about being a pretty face and I have this agency that I'm signed with now so I don't have to do anything. Right. Um, so all to me, that's, those are things that you want to remember, you want to think about, and especially like right off the top. I don't care about all the other stuff. They don't have to be your best friend, yeah. but you do have to make sure that you're representing yourself. You're putting in, putting in what you expect to get out. That's right. So that's right. You know that that's a big a, a big part of it. Your agent, as a matter of fact, and I had a, a conversation years ago, and I remember it was about. Um, we were talking about, I think it was an interview that I did with someone. And she said, you know, one of the topics that you need to talk about is models and what to say and what not to say or what not to share on set. Rates is a really big deal. Like models sharing their rates with other ones. And you never know who's embellishing, who's not or whatever. And then you have models coming back to the agent saying, why is that girl making $300 more than me? You should never share your private information because you're number one at the end of that entire conversation, that whole big thing that happened back then that she and I were talking about it. The, the, the model who said she was making more actually was not making more. That was just something that she said because she thought the other model was making more. So she embellished her numbers and it created this whole big thing between clients and it soured the relationship between that model and the client. So in her embellishing her own rate, at the end of the day, the big picture was, don't talk about your rate. Don't talk about your client. Don't talk about anything. Don't say, oh yeah, because when I went on set, I can't believe they did that and they did that. Someone on that set, that hairstylist, that makeup mm -hmm. artist, that art director may work for that client as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I heard that this model was talking you know, about the last time that she worked here or whatever. That's the last time I've seen it happen. I've literally seen it happen that a, a model will say one thing and somebody on that set works with the other client that they were talking about. And that is the end of your bread and butter. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. I think a lot, I think that's a big one that is, and I've had that conversation with her as well, that just, we talk about it a lot. And I think, I think because when I, when I got with my, so the agency I'm with is IPM. When I, when I started with IPM, um, I was already, I had already been modeling. I had, I wasn't a newbie coming in and I don't know if it's that part or if it's the fact that I've worked in corporate America for so long and it is a job. Modeling is a job. When you were on set, it is the same as you going into a conference room and you're having this meeting with sometimes the owner of the brand is there or they are very close by watching. It's it's not always just like, it's just a photographer that they hired and the makeup artist they are. That's not, that's not the case. And so everything that comes out of your mouth I, whether it's your personal views on something political, rates, all of those things, yes. it's always been a big no-no. Yes. You don't need to talk about You're it. You're there to do all. your job. That's yes. it. Absolutely. Yes. So modeling back then was really different. Like I remember you and I talking about this um, right before your interview. Um, and we talked about how different it was because now with social media, you have you know, like Instagram models, and then you have like regular models that are signed and they just happen to also work as influencers. But it was different back in the day. Like you actually had to walk in with your book of photos, not your iPad that they swipe through. So modeling then and modeling now is definitely very different. What are the, the biggest differences that you see in the industry? I think the biggest in difference, um, and not just because I am one of the ones that switched over to the iPad. Um, I have my book, but I have switched over to that. And it wasn't my really? choice, actually. <laughs> my husband showed up with the iPad and was like, I don't want you to keep flying to New York and all these girls have their iPad and you're still pulling out your book. Here's your iPad. Aww. And I literally got it like 
the night before he had surprised me with it. I was like, oh, and I downloaded everything. But um, the biggest difference I would definitely have to say is social media. That social media platform changed everything, everything. I mean, I believe um, I was at, Tabria Majors did a, 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 like a seminar type thing for new models. And I had came by just to, to, to say hi and see how everything was going. And, um, and as I was sitting in the back of the room listening, she was talking about how she was found on Instagram. She was literally found on Instagram. And, and that is the new way of finding things now and that pressure of everything that you put on there. But also clients are using Instagram as a way to like, you have the portfolio that your agency puts out there and they, they looked at it. That's how they know that they want to find you, but they are jumping right to your Instagram page and they're looking at what you're posting. How do you look? I, I mean, we've talked about so many, so many times how they, you're submitting a photo with one look and a certain hairstyle and they go on your Instagram page and they go, I like this. Can she show up like this instead? And it was from a year ago. And you're like, Oh my God, my hair is not like that. Yes. But that's what they want. And, yeah. um, I, but I think that makes a, that definitely makes a big difference, um, from everything from how fast the, the process is going, where they're rotating out that calendar, because there's a new girl for them to see a lot faster than when they were having to hold a whole casting call. And then the, the team has to sit down and discuss or mailing out. Uh, a lot of people don't even realize that these days, yeah. um, mailing out your packet, your, your agency used to mail out a packet. That doesn't happen anymore. I had so, I had stacks and stacks from all the agencies. Oh my gosh. I still have some because the, the cards yeah, are so nice. They are. I, I have, I, and I still have comp cards. And amazingly, most of the time when you go on casting, they love it. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. It's okay. <coughs> they but I love think it. that's, I love, I do love seeing that part of it, but I get why everything is so electronic nowadays. I totally, you know, get that. Um, but it's really nice to see how some of that has kind of, you know, changed into what we're doing, you know, today. And I'm able to kind of see the electronic comp cards and stuff like that. But social media definitely has changed the game a lot. And like what you said about, you know, clients being able to see, like, when I do castings for clients and I make lists, I not only put the link to their agency they always ask, can you also put the link to their Instagram? So whether you're on it or not, I'm putting it on, even if it's just all your family on there and you don't have any modeling pictures, yes. but they're going to look. And so if you are, you have to think about it this way. And this is how I always tell models because models say, should I have a separate modeling account, you know, a Instagram account for modeling and one for everything else. I always feel like if you are completely different you know, and you're an activist, let's say you're really into political and into politics and you want to have that account, then maybe have that account because mm -hmm. they don't know, not that you would, but because they don't know who you would be, let's say, you know, let it be last year when they were bringing you in on set. What if you were pro or non or whatever? And what if that discussion yeah. happened and disrupted a photo shoot? They're always trying to err on the side of caution. So not that I don't think that it's a personal thing, but they feel like we just want someone that's going to come here and do their job. And my favorite, my favorite story was, I remember I was talking to a producer and art director at Forever 21 long time ago, really, really nice lady. And she said, I was, we were talking about modeling and she said, these, we did a casting and there were these two girls, they had an opening for, for one girl. They already had two, they were opening for one. I think it was when Denise Bedell left. So they were looking for someone. They were looking for someone that was a brunette, someone that would look similar to Denise. But some, one of the agents sent a blonde. The brunette that came in from another agency looked like Denise, moved like Denise, but came in with the most horrible attitude. She said, oh, she just came in. She just knew everything. Uh, uh, uh. And she was like, like really like annoying on set. The other girl was a complete newbie. You know, she was totally green, didn't really know how to pose, but was such a sweetheart. And she said, guess which one they chose? And I was like, they chose the blonde? She said, yes, you know why? Because we could help her get to where she needs to be. That yeah. she would be easier for us to work with and mold her into a great model than to take somebody and break them down and be like, stop being annoying. Stop, you know what I mean? So could you imagine 
Like that is how much, this is why I feel like agents will, you know, they'll ask for like a size 16, but they'll send 14 through 22 because you just never know who's going to get that job. Never know. That's how much I feel personality and how you act in your character and your integrity has so much to do with your modeling career. It has more, it has, yes, it's a look that they're looking for, but it has so much to do with who you are. And I don't think that a lot of people realize that. Correct. Yeah, it definitely does. And um, that that's when you're, when you were talking about models asking, should they have a separate model account? So I um, actually separate mine. I don't have a separate modeling account, but my Instagram is solely like you see on there. It's mostly just photos that are literally model for photos. That's it. Um, right. Very rarely in, in, in the feed. Um, on my story, I'll kind of use it a little bit more to post something as it's going by. But my feed, if they're going to go back and look, I want them to see like model, 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 model. That's all I want them to see. Um, I'm very picky about what I post on there. Uh, th- that's how I treat my Instagram. It is a form of business at this point. It is a business card. Right. Um, I used to make, well, when, when we were passing out cards, so I used to take a, a, make a business card, a little tiny one. And I would pick whatever, four of my favorite photos and put that on the back and on the front would have my information. And it was a smaller way that they wouldn't lose a comp card. And then my comp cards were for casting and mm. I would have that. And that's why, that's how I treat my Instagram. Now my Facebook, I do have a fan page on my Facebook and I don't post anything except for modeling things on the fan page. So it just mirrors my, um, uh, Instagram, Instagram right. my Facebook page. There are, there are a lot of models and people in the industry that are on there. And that's just because like people like you, I've known you for so long and you guys have been there from the beginning when I started the Facebook, but everyone else moving forward, I had completely stopped adding any people. It's mostly just my family on there, friends on there. That's my Facebook. My Snapchat is 100% me. <laughs> I, it's not it's not public it is private it's a hundred percent me that's where if my husband and I are doing something silly I you know I, I I put that on there and I like that it saves it as like videos we can go back to my wedding like we had everyone use the snapchat filter and things for the oh. wedding so we have that pops up during anniversary that is my snapchat and for me that way works um, because I just don't, I'm the same, I'm, I hundred percent agree with you. I don't want to go on set and they're worried about something that I posted or my personal views because it's, to me, it's like business when I'm right. there, I'm a model. I don't have a personal opinion while I'm there. Right. That you is not what I'm do doing. your job. Exactly. 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 That's all that I'm doing. <laughs> so I love that you're on the February cover. This is Black History Month, and you've always been a really great advocate for Black models in the industry. And you and I have also talked about this. You know, the industry has a, our, the plus size industry has been really, really slow in two fronts. Number one, in representation of diversity on several levels. We have not seen as many bigger models as we've seen now. I remember when I first started, Wilhelmina had Wilhelmina 1020, but that was very short lived when I first started. All the 1820s were out the door and we actually started going down and the girls just got smaller and smaller and smaller. Now you go on a website like Lane Bryant, you know, now and influencers and, you know, models, they're bigger. Every time I see that girl Quan, I think her name is, the Laquan, yeah. I'm, oh my gosh, every time I see her walking, I'm like, yes, I see her on the other side, I'm like, oh my gosh. I love it. I love seeing the diversity because we are all not one size. We're not all one shape. And it's it does so much for the self-esteem of the customers and the community as a whole. I think that the contributions of the Black models and just of the, the Black community in the plus size industry from when it started has been so significant. There are so many people that we really have to acknowledge that through the years really helped to put this community together before Instagram, before Facebook, there was a community because they put it together. And a lot of those people were African-American, a lot. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Yes. Um, so one of the things that I pointed out when you asked that question in the interview, and that it just, to me, makes sense, may not make sense to everyone, but when we look at the plus size community, um, African-Americans have such a big role in it because we're naturally curvy, just like, 
Latin Americans or our brown sisters and brothers in the same way. We are naturally curvy people. And a lot of people don't know that for a very long time, there's been the church runway shows. There's been all these fashion houses. This has been huge down South for a very long time. A lot of the trends and things that are happening come out of the African-American community. When you're looking at hip hop and you're looking at everything from jewelry culture to hairstyles that keep becoming this big thing. And that's a whole nother discussion about everyone having a problem with someone else wearing a hairstyle. That's a different discussion, but, um, but still the trend is coming from the African-American community. And then when we look at why does that affect the plus size community, it's because we're mostly curvy women. Even if I was a size six, that size six is, is a lot curvier. And I learned this earlier on when I was working for a fashion um, PR company. And we did a lot of things for New York Fashion Week. When we were casting, we would have these castings. I would watch, they're both a size two, but the, the black girl that would come in, she's just, her hips are a little bit wider. She's a size two and it fits for the clothes, but they were taking exact measurements and her hips are a little bit wider because she is curvier. That's just how she's built. And I remember the girl saying, I don't know what what else I can do. Like I am down, there's nothing else. And I'm watching her hip bones. I can see them sticking out. There was no fat left on her. That's just how she built her muscle, her shape and everything. And I just kept, at that time, the plus size was a little larger. There wasn't a smaller frame that we use now. So when we see people like Robin Lawley is a lot smaller, but we consider her plus size. Marquita right. Pring is, is, is more athletic build, but she still models for a plus size. We didn't have as much of that then that right. we do now. Now the right. range is so huge. And I love that part. That's a change that I do love because I've always been curvy. I've been an athlete my entire life. So for me to be able to see models who are a size 10 or a size 12, and there, it's not that, they, that anything is wrong with them. They're just a curvier shape. That's just how they are. And I love it. But I also love the fact that now I can see larger girls as well. I mean, I actually saw a casting where they were looking for a size 28, 30. We never saw castings like that before. Ever, ever, ever ever saw castings like that. Um, And I think although influencers played, I think played a big part in that, uh, body positive activists played a huge part in that. And I think that's also why we see influencers now getting the roles that were traditionally just only a model would have. Um, But they opened up that door. Also, also the thing that I would like to see change though, is that a lot of doors right now, although the plus size community recognizes that that African-Americans play a major part, the change doesn't happen when the African-American influencer or model does it. It's a lot of times when the Caucasian or the very fair-skinned uh, influencer or body activist speaks up. And this is not just in yeah. plus size modeling. This is even what we saw happening uh, when you look back in the history or if we look at what was happening with Black Lives Matter. Oftentimes right. you notice the lighter skinned uh, person is the, is the, the key speaker or the right. leader or the forefront person. Right. And, and we see that across the board. We also see that in, in um, modeling as well. Um, I'll take it how we can get it, but I would like to see that change. I would like I to see uh, that, that for people to understand that there's a difference in skin tone. And we, a lot of times in the industry, they tend to go lighter is safer. So mm-hmm. yes, I- Or they'll uh, go completely opposite is what I'm seeing now. It's like, yes. they'll just add someone really dark, you know, with like, you know, short, short, short hair. hair. Yes. Right. And I'm and like, and diversity is not just adding one person. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Diversity is just real true diversity. Like I, people were so scared last year. Like, oh my God, oh my God, we're going to be canceled. People were like, you know, everybody's going to be canceled. I'm like, if you start, if the top, whoever's in charge, if you start at the top and you're doing things the right way, you don't ever have to be scared that you're going to be canceled because you've been inclusive the entire time. Exactly. Exactly. And that is where we need the brands to be. And I think that that's where they're going. I feel like there's a way to speak to the brands, which is what I did. While everybody else was, everybody was really, you know, out there and saying what they had to say. 
I was the one that was going behind the scenes and I was saying, listen, y'all are in big trouble here. Let's get you, you need to understand. I don't expect someone that's not, you know, an African-American or a Latina or a minority to understand who we are, how we live, how we see things. I don't, I don't pretend that they could ever truly understand, but you need to have those people in those places, in those positions of power so that yes. they can make those decisions. Not yes. so you can ask them permission. Can we do this? That's not what you need. You need someone there that's in a position of power. That's what you need. And, and I think, I think a prime example of this, and I don't know if you remember, uh, the little boy that was modeling and they put a monkey on yes. his shirt, right? So there was this question of like, how did that get passed? Nobody noticed that. Why didn't we see that? Well, no one noticed it because the people who are in charge to make the decision do not see through the same eyes. Exactly. They don't see that and they didn't understand what the big deal was and that's how it slipped through. Because like you said, the people, the, who do you have in the position at the top to right. help you see that and to help you understand? Right. I don't expect everyone to understand. Um, right. the, we, we talked about this a great deal with where we see the world now, right? We, we, there's, there was a lot of, of why the black community was so quiet, a little more quiet than everybody else with the George Floyd situation. Mm -hmm. The reason being is because we're numb where you it wasn't a shock everyone else is shocked because you didn't see it you've heard us talk about it you've never seen it this time you saw the whole thing so that's where the shock comes from or um during that time there was models of change that uh, right. developed right so they're right. sharing all of these stories when you're hearing these stories i'm not shocked this right. is what i experience on set already Everyone right. else is like, I can't believe you experienced that. No, we've been telling you this for a long time. It's right. different when you see it, when you right. experience it. You'll right. never fully understand because you don't see it through our lens. But to go, I still, right now, it's 2021. If I'm going on set and there's multiple makeup artists, I am scanning to see what they have out. And do I think that that person is the best person for me to sit in the chair? I still, right now, my Mac makeup bag is two times larger than my white counterpart because I have to bring all my hair tools, my hair product, an entire makeup kit that I don't even know how to do makeup. So I don't buy the makeup kit because I do it on my, for me, I buy it for me to take with me, an entire <laughs> makeup kit. Oh I own God. it but I don't use it myself personally because I still go on to set in 2021 and I have someone who was hired as a professional makeup artist that cannot match my color or right. do my hair. And this is the problem. That's why I say, it's not that we need someone there for you to ask permission. We need people in positions of power. And so when people say, you know, I really want, you know, I remember this one lady was like, I'm a, I have, uh, she, I think she had like a doc, her doctor it was. And she's like, I want to be a model because I want to make it in this world. This was a lady with her doctorate. And I said, man, the things that you could do, you have a, you have a doctorate, the things that you can do in our industry and influence yeah. our industry are unimaginable. Being a model is a job, but being at the table where the decisions are made is such a powerful place. And so I don't dismiss models because, you know, just the little bit of modeling that I've done, my hat's off to people that do this for a living because it's a lot. But I think that we also have to, you know, encourage people that don't find their way in the modeling industry to be true influencers at the company. Because if you really think about who's an influencer, that means who are you influencing? Yeah, I want to influence people to go and buy the dress or go buy the earrings or whatever. I want to influence companies to do the right thing. I want them to be truly diverse. I want them to actually listen to their customer and stop telling them what they want to hear, you know, but do right by them. Do right by your customer. That's truly being an influencer when you have that seat at the table. And I feel like that's the part of the next generation. Anyone that's younger, that's in this industry, that's starting, I'm always kind of putting that into. And I think that's what we used to do back in the day. When we used to fly to each other's events because we didn't have social media and all we had was like a forum or something. So, you know, we supported each other that way, but that's what we used to do. We 
supported each other and we tried to get support other people that we felt like, oh my God, she may be talking to this brand, you know, this will benefit all of us. And I hope that one day we get back to that place where we start that. supporting people yeah. that listen, you know, she has their ear, let's support her. You know what I mean? Yeah. When, when, uh, who was it? Chastity, Down, Chastity Gardner, when she was going to, um, go again she was talking about target and what happened we all were clapping for chastity yes tell them tell them tell them what a target do they did the right thing i can go into any target right now and see so many people you know so many different you know so much diversity with them they yeah. did listen yeah. and that's what happens when you really you know do the right thing and influence in the right way in my book anyway <laughs> and i think i think that goes both ways i think it was i think it was fluvia that had the conversation with ashley stewart and when Thanks we used to see Ashley Stewart, it was it was nothing. It was a very specific girl that they used, and it yes. was only that girl. And it didn't make it, it, her difference wasn't just like, oh, I need. I think there needs to be more diversity because you're not using a brown model or a white model. That wasn't right. it. It was just right. in general the size, the look of the girl. Now yes. when you see Ashley Stewart, there's all different shades of girls. There's all yes. different, there's a variety of age group. There's a variety of style. All of that comes into play. And, and so it goes on both on, um, both sides of the spectrum when we say the word diversity. And I, and I do remember when the whole body positivity move, movement came out and we were screaming about more diversity. I 100% remember saying, oh, this is great that we're talking about diversity, but are we stopping at shape or, or just the shape of the body? That was the diversity we wanted or just size. That was the only, I mean, what about, what about color? Color is, is, this is huge for a long time now, color. And yes, we're seeing small changes. Um, can it move faster? Of course, you just cast the person that you want to cast. I mean, it's, there's nothing holding you back, um, especially when we talk about, again, the influence that African-Americans have on the plus community. We spend a lot of money in fashion. Right. We That's spend an, a lot of money in fashion. And so when you say what kind of influence, that's an influence right then and there is you yeah. need, you should probably look at the fact of who's buying everything. Yeah. Um, a quick story, I actually have a client that was saying to me that during this time, they, they have multiple brands. Um, one brand, they only use white models. That is the, that's, that, that's the focus of that brand. That's that demographic. The other brand, they only use black models. That's the demographic that they use. So when the pandemic happened, they stopped putting any money. They didn't produce any new styles. They didn't shoot. They didn't do anything during the pandemic because they said, I don't think that they would have been spending money. I don't think that demographic was going to spend money. A very large uh, retailer, Nordstrom's, said, we need more of this brand. Um, we're not really interested in buying more when it was time to buy again of this, of, of, of this brand. We want more of the brand. And, and by the way, is it, is it black owned? You always use black, Mo put them on the spot. And then they were scrambling to come up with a whole new collection, shoot the shoot and, and do the whole thing. And, and I said to them, I went ahead, I've been working with them for a long time, but I said to them when they told me that in the fitting, in my fittings, I said, you made a big mistake. I'm sorry to tell you. We spent so much money being locked up at home right. after getting stimulus checks and, and, and the EDD extra grants and all. I mean, we spent so much money. It's ridiculous. You would have done an amazing, phenomenal job. You didn't even have to reshoot anything. You could have just, you should have just put money into advertising so people knew that it was there wow. and you would have made that money. But you, yeah. you thought, unfortunately, you thought, well, the, the white community was going to keep spending money. They have the money. And the black community does. They're not going to spend that kind of money. And they were wrong. At all. They were wrong. And I think this was a prime example of that. Yeah. And this is a good point that you're making. I think that I, I see a lot of people talking, you know, the brand, the brand, the brand. You don't realize that the brand is a bunch of people. Yes. And sometimes people make mistakes. Also. So I'm not you know, just arbitrarily giving everybody a pass, but I'm saying it also gives us an opportunity to change the brand's mind because yes. the brand is made of people. So right. to me, if I'm, I'm a brand, I have a, I'm a business owner and I had never done a, a black issue because I felt like 
I always use black models. So I didn't need to do a black issue or Latin issue because everybody gets everything in. But Lyris and Winaka came up to me one day after a photo shoot and they said, you know, Maddie, you really haven't done one. And they, they came to, they didn't say, you know, Maddie, you need to come, blah, 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 whatever. They were like, they both sat me down, Sona, and I said, you know what? Thank you. And I did, I did a black issue. And when I went to that issue, it was, I, t- I say that because there's a, yes, we have a right to be angry that diversity has taken this long. But from a brand perspective, what Lyris and Winneka did for me was open my eyes by having that conversation because I didn't think that I needed to do a black issue or even do spotlight during February or whatever. But because they came to me and explained it from their point of view, because even though I'm Latina, I'm not a black woman, but they came to me to show me, to enlighten me, to, 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 to teach me why it was important for me to do it. And so I think if we kind of take that same those same steps and say, you know what? We have the opportunity to change brands' minds because brands are made of people. Yes. yes. That's what I learned like last year. I was like, you know what? Yes, we have a right to be angry. Yes, yes, yes. But at the same time, I don't want this to fall on deaf ears and for people to make a quick change and then forget about it. I want right. re- I want lasting change. Yes. So I'm going to let y'all do all that and I'm going to come behind here and be like, listen, I'm going to hold you to this. You know what I mean? And really make sure that we see the change moving forward. And thank God that so far I have seen some positive change. But as we're ending our interview, I don't wanna keep you all this time. Um, There's a lot of aspiring models and aspiring um, influencers um, that are going to listen to this interview. What would be your five best tips for them? you know, for them to be starting their, their career or even if they've already started, but they feel like they're stagnant. I think the five best tips would be right off the back. Again, what you put in is what you're going to get out. Um, please invest in your test shoot. Yes, you can get free, free shoots, but it doesn't mean that that's going to be the quality that you need. Um, that test shoot, separate them if you need to. You know, you can have the test shoot that is the one that your agent needs. They can be very specific. Reach out to your agent. What is it that we need right now? What do you think that I'm missing? Why am I not booking this? Or do we need a a variety because she's sending you to a new type of client? You know, maybe you didn't have enough swimsuit or maybe what the swimsuit you had was a little too sexy and she's trying to pitch you to Lane Bryan and it doesn't need to be that sexy. You know, we need to make it more commercial. Understanding that. So that's one. Um, Two would be understanding your path, your lane. So one thing I, after I was with several other agents, when I got with IPM, I was, she sat me down and we literally went through different agency boards. And we were like, she said, this is not your lane. This is your lane. This here, this girl. And then we went to another one, this girl, not this girl. So I had a better understanding of what direction that I was trying to go and, and what type of model she saw me as. That makes a difference. I'm, I'm, I'm not a Tabria and I, I'm not a Marquita. However, um, I might be closer to a Waneka. You know, you have, to, you have to look at which direction you're going in those models. And by the way, I love Waneka, okay? I've been, <laughs> she's so awesome. You brought up Waneka and I was like, I love her. Um, but so you, you have to look at which direction that you're going and understand what model, that model you are. Not that you can't, model across the board, but understanding what your, what your direction and your path is. Um, I'm not a teen model. I, I don't need to mimic everything that Forever 21 is doing because I'm not a teen model. So you need to look at that. So that's two, which direction are you going? Um, three, understanding what your agent, the, the, what an agent does. I would say that I get that question a lot. Um, understanding, you know, should you freelance or should you be represented? Are you ready to be represented and understand what that means? Right. Um, four, I would say your, your value in your work. I think that makes a big, a big difference. I think a lot of us, uh, new models, um, either they think they're, they're supposed to get paid way up here and they don't understand that everyone doesn't get the same pay scale. Or they think that they should um, 
they're going to take anything and everything. And they think that's the best way to go. So when we're talking about those models that got stagnant, they didn't understand where to say no or to negotiate for the rate that you deserve. We see, I see that a lot on the West coast. And what happens is, is it lowers the pay scale for every model. When that happens, you're lowering that down. And so I think that's another thing. Learn your pay scale, learn where you should be, learn, you know, a newbie, where, where's it, where's a new face coming in? Where does runway come in? We don't talk about that as much in plus size. Um, but if you were at a larger agency that had multiple boards, you would understand a new face board, uh, the runway board, your commercial lifestyle board, you would understand the fashion board. There is a difference and the pay scale is different where you're booking. Um, the market is different. If I'm booking on the West coast versus the East coast, my rate changes. There's right. a difference. There's a difference in rate. Um, so I think that that would be it. And then the fifth one, I would say understanding that it's a marathon. This is about stamina and in, and endurance. It is not like, oh my God, I landed my large job of the one big client that I wanted. And now it's going to take off from here. And I'm going to be the next Ashley Graham. No. Right. Right. I mean, Ashley, that didn't even happen for Ashley Graham. Now to us, we saw her everywhere with Lane Bryant. Right. And we thought like, oh my God, she's big and huge. Who knew that she would be to where she is now after Sports Illustrated? Because to us, we saw her everywhere with Lane Bryant and that wasn't the, the top of her career. So understand that there is a marathon and that you have to be able to have that stamina and endurance to keep pushing through in this industry. You will have downs and then you will have highs. And if you really want it, you will keep working. You will understand maybe I need to tweak something or understand that this isn't your season. Maybe the season isn't for green eyes and it's for blue eyes on this season. But when the winter comes, they want to go back to green eyes again. Just, you know, right. understanding that and keeping yourself relevant so that they remember that you're there when they're ready to book you. Exactly. So I, think that's a, I think that's a good five. <laughs> All the jobs. I think that was one of the big takeaways, you know, for me throughout so many years. I love my small clients as well as my big clients because every, everyone has been a part of, you know, the development of Plus Model Magazine, no matter who the model was. And to truth be told, the models from way in the beginning were the ones that really molded Plus Model Magazine. It wasn't the big name models. It was Denise Bedell when she was still a makeup artist. Yeah. That, well, you know what I mean? Like people don't know. She was on the cover when she was still a makeup artist, not when she was. Denise. I remember that on the roof in the denim look. Yes. Oh my but, gosh. I can't. That just made me think about how long I <laughs> doing this because I was on set and I don't even know if Denise remembers this, but I was on set with Denise for that. So it's a, like you were talking about those small clients. She was the makeup artist and then they ended up booking her. They ended up using her too. And I was on set with her and they were telling me, oh no, she was the makeup artist. Remember last time we shot, she was the makeup artist and I loved her, her shape. And so they booked her and mm -hmm. then I was, I modeled with her. So as I would see her through the years, I'd be like, oh my gosh, Denise, you kind of just catapulted. From like, makeup artists. I knew crazy. It was crazy. But that's what you never know. I think really being appreciative of your clients and being appreciative of your journey, which is definitely something you have always done. So yeah. thank you so much for being on the cover, Summer. I love you so much. Thank you for everything. The pictures are amazing. Your interview. If you want to hear more about Summer, definitely go to our interview at Plus Model Man. And Summer, give your husband a big hug from all of us. I will. Thank you so much again. I love you so much. I'm so excited. And please tell Lucas and, and Madison hi for me. All right. All right. Well, we will see you soon. Make sure you check out her cover at Plus Model Mag and um, where they can follow you. Make sure you tell them that too. Uh, you can follow me at, at Summer Boogie, S-O-M-M-E-R-B-O-O-G-I-E -O -O -E for Instagram. That's probably where you'll find me the most. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> All righty. Thank you so much. It was a great interview. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you.